just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. The double champ does what the f he wants. Wait, that's not a new chair though for you. That's your usual chair. I'm the only one here today with a new chair, I guess. Yeah, stuck Courtesy with the old backbreaker. Austin's breaker. mom. Yep. The other one... Uh, What'd you say about my mom? <laughs> it's questionable. The other one that yeah. Brock neglected. Yeah. Sitting over there lonely in the corner. It's hey. got a nice dip. She's dirty, but it feels yeah, good. Yeah, it's got a lot of white stains <laughs> on it, so I don't want to yeah. get into that. What's up? We're live. Yeah, Let's we are live. On. We're live. It's uh, Monday. This is like our old format now. I feel like we went out and got a drink specifically yeah. for the show. We yeah. did. I, know. I like it more that way, but I also feel like it racks up that way. Yeah, it does, because uh, there's only so much we can fucking sample. Well, I was thinking about that. It's like, I, I kind of want to keep the energy drink reviews, because I feel like that's a little unique to our show, and it's yeah. fun. But then I also feel like, you know, it does rack up. But there's so many drinks out there. Yeah. It's just... The more uh, financial thing to do would be buy a case, but then you're stuck with that flavor, so it's like, yeah, I don't know. And when I was in Vitamin Shop, I, how much uh, did you pay for these? Sorry, to I'll check them. the receipt. Okay. I don't. I oh, think yeah, it was like three, memory. maybe, but yeah. I'll check. I well, like just under three. But when I was in there, I was looking at the cases just to see if there was any different flavors than what was in the. Hide it! Put your mask on! Put your mask on! <laughs> <laughs> the deputy health uh, inspectors um, here. But I was uh, I was looking to see like hmm. Well, you know, is there any different flavor that's in the case than what's in the fridge? And I saw that there were some Jocko cases, and then there was a label that said, "Sorry that we don't have like one of your favorites." It was so popular, it got sold out. And I was like, "No way in hell, this is a Jocko." So one. I, uh, Morgan uh, lifts, you know, yeah. she's been here a few times. She posted, but it how- wasn't. She posted that they're garbage, and I said, yeah, those things suck. And she was like, worst thing I've ever drank. And I was like, thank you for, like, having normal taste buds. Yeah. I don't know how anybody drinks It blows those. me away that that guy has so much hype. Same with yeah. uh, Ghost or uh, Alani. other brands, Alani even. You, you wonder, know? like, do they flavor test these things even before they send them out? Like, they does definitely he just do, say, but it's like, yeah, he must just say good, and they're like, oh, okay. They Suck don't understand up. what it really means. Eat yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> good. So today we've got Bucked Up, and I was looking for a different flavor, actually. I was in Fredericksburg this weekend, and the Golds there had a flavor called Wild Orchard. It was a really good apple that was almost like apple cider, like a little touch of cinnamon, too. So I wanted them to try it, but they only had a couple flavors, so we got the Rocket And I was telling the guys, because I I forgot we really enjoyed the Killer OJ from them. And so I think the next run of energy drinks we'll do. We already have some coming in this week, but the next run for the gym, I think we'll do a couple of cases of bucked up. And if this hits, this might be one of the flavors. What'd you say that was OJ? Killa OJ. We tried that. Yeah, on the show. I remember the I think, raspberry one. I don't think we, we tried did a grape and ones. we did a Killa OJ for sure. Or I had the orange juice somewhere. It had to be on the show. Maybe. Definitely no, I think show. you got that by yourself because I remember you sent me a picture of it. Griffin. Yeah, did, you know what? I think you're right. Did this come with a Rough Country sticker for the back glass of my car? <laughs> <laughs> rough Country or yeah, uh, Browning? P- piss, uh, pissing on a Chevy? What they yeah, that's true. Yeah, get the yeah, Calvin salt life. picture. Yeah, salt, yeah. Salt, yeah. Life. salt life. <laughs> <laughs> These colors it. don't run. They Hell reload. Yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get some sips in. It's weird to think that every brand pretty much has like a rocket pop flavor, and they're all different. They're all different. That's different. But this one is uh, this one's consistent. I feel like this one tastes the most like the actual popsicle, the most like the actual rocket pop, and it reminds me a lot of. Uh, I know neither of you have had it, but First Forms Megawatt they have a rocket pop flavor, <coughs> and that one actually is very accurate to the rocket pop flavor too. If I had to guess, I don't know what the blue is, but it has blue in it, a lot more blue than. Yeah. I'm, I'm chewing on blue right now. Chewing on blue. Because <laughs> like, yeah. when you're eating the popsicle, you can tell the difference between the red, white, yeah, and blue. Yeah, that's this true. This is blue. It reminds me it of has like... a cherry finish, though. No, summer day at the pool. Oh, yeah. Unwrap that page. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So. Yeah, this one's good. Uh, 7-4. All right. What would be your critique? I just think, I don't know, as, as far as a rocket pop, it's probably like a 9 out of 10, but... 
I, I'm just not like Raga Pop isn't a flavor that pushes me into that eight range, no matter how. Oh, uh, gotcha. That actually is a good criteria, like flavor rating based on what flavor it is, and then like rating based on how much you like it. Yeah. But uh, because it might be an amazing, let's say like you know, uh, fruit punch. But if you hate fruit punch, you're never gonna rate it high. Yeah. I would yeah. say probably a seven. Nice. Pretty good. What do you got, Austin? Uh, I'll go with the seven two. Reason being is that it is a good flavor, it's, but it's not like something that stands out. Yeah. It's your run-of-the-mill rocket pop. And overall drink, I mean, I'm looking, because I, I just realized they had some other ingredients, like trademarked ingredients in there, which is cool. I don't see the dosing for the teocrine or the dynamine, but it's cool that they use those as energy sources besides caffeine. And the glycerol. Alpha, yeah, the, the alpha size, depending on how much they have in there, it could be worthless, which I'm assuming it probably <laughs> well, is. Well, especially for well, a can. On their pre-workout, I was looking, and um, well, Al- Alpha Size is different from Alpha GPC, right or no? No, I believe it's the same. Okay, because on their pre-workout, they have like 200 milligrams, so I doubt that's in this. But no. as far as like, they might have a decent amount though, because yeah. that seems like a decent dose for pre-workout. Would it be worth if it was a small amount? Would it be worth paying for the trademark though? Probably still, just because people. I mean, you see that on the side of the can, you're, you're like, oh shit, size alpha. I want to be alpha. Yeah. You see those reindeer horns? Yeah. Alpha is Yeah, fuck. that's a rack. That, that yeah. there's a rack. <laughs> yeah. <that's- laughs> yeah. Anyways, it's all weird. It's always weird, you know, like, especially from, like, my thinking of when you design a label or something. Now that we're starting to add some of our trademarked ingredients to the label. But before I was like, oh, nobody will know what the fuck it, what it is anyway, so yeah. why put it on there? But now I'm like, well... Obviously, people do see that, and it's like, oh shit, yeah, you know. Which I mean, business. it's good to see. that. I think it matters where you place it, because like I didn't really think about it either as a consumer for a while. But then, like, the more I saw it, like, you know, by the actual nutrition label, I think it looks good. But I think if you plaster it by your logo on the front, it's like yeah. I don't really want to see that. For know? sure, for sure, gets busy, and you're like, what the yeah. fuck is that? But um, yeah, it's a good drink. Good drink. Good move, uh, Griffin. Thanks, Would man. like to know. I guess you probably spent like 280 on these things, maybe. Yeah, I think it was like 280, 290, mm. something like that. Mm. Not worth it if you're just buying a can, I would say, like every day. Yeah. Yeah. Not worth it more from a case. So we want to um, talk about the Olympia recap? Because that's jumping over Yeah, yeah that's I, true. That's inform true. me because I didn't keep up with it one bit. He's rolling. Got to poop. Yeah. <laughs> Got to poop. Um, you gotta go. You gotta go. I didn't really keep up with men's physique. I never. I'm, now that classic is out, I feel like I have no reason to really like <laughs> look at that. But uh, I was surprised. Did you see Chris Bumstead's like transformation from last year? With you the put back? in some work. I know some work. Because I feel like the past years, even though he's won versus coming second. I did, but it's. I didn't pack it. I didn't think they'd come this early. So just tell him, never mind. Thank you. We can just trim this part out. (laughs) I mean, he can stay. Business. But I didn't expect him to come that early. I feel like we need to do a cut. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll cut it. I I hate that lady. Oh, is it the same one? Yeah, I hate it. (laughs) <laughs> she probably just thinks you're like fucking with her now. <laughs> we are. <laughs> oh, psych. Oh, Wrong you, number. You don't. You didn't like picking up those packages last time. Okay. It's a prank. <laughs> Make the trip out here, and we're just gonna send you home. <laughs> Damn. Dang. Whatever. She's on the phone with Northam now. Probably. Oh fuck. Driving. He wasn't wearing a mask. <laughs> um. But yeah, I was telling Austin. I feel like Chris uh, made a crazy transformation from the year before. Oh, yeah. Um, and yeah. I feel like in years prior, even when he's won versus coming second, I feel like, you know, he still looks very similar, like a winning physique versus a second place physique. I couldn't really pick out differences in years prior, if that makes sense. But this year, I feel like he really brought up the back, the traps, the arms, like everything. Yeah. Overall. Usually from year to year, I feel like competitors make small changes, but to me, it's like the same physique. You either just came in the same or you maybe were a little laner or, you know, Things like that, but yeah, you can clearly see in the pictures. It's like he added like an extra freaking set of wings on his lats. Yeah, it was like drastic improvement. He yeah. completely addressed like what was his you know weakness. And he shrunk that other guy. Yeah, 
the and I feel like pro. too, especially <clears throat> in like a child. the past year, like think of the top three of like Chris, Brian, and George last year. I feel like Chris is the only one I feel like that I consider classic physique. And then this year with Chris, Terrence, and Brian, I think that Chris and Terrence are both very much classic physique. And Brian, I still think is like more of like a two twelve, like George is, but yeah. could fill that out a little bit more. I definitely those comparison shots that y'all are talking about. Not only did he obviously gain size and weight, but his conditioning was hella better this this go around as well because he showed like his one week out versus his two week yeah. out this year, and his two week out sh- made it the other one week out look like he was fat. You know? I know, it's true. It was like, damn, dude didn't diet hard enough. Well, he dieted even harder. This time. I think as the years go on too, because like the classic physique is still such a new division that I think um, moving forward, the up and coming bodybuilders will like have that as a focus, you know, the entire time that they're training or starting to get into it. Versus like right now, Brian was a regular bodybuilder for a while. Like I think not two twelve per se, but he was more of a bodybuilder that transitioned to classic. And then other guys like Logan Franklin were physique that transitioned to classic. <laughs> Versus, I think, you know, now that it's more of an established division, you'll start to see a lot more physiques that, um, you know, Griffin and I talked about that like look the, classic, that are actually feel classic, you know, because yeah. they're, they're, they had that goal from the start rather than let me try and cater my physique towards physique or open. Yeah, that's true. I was, that, um, sorry, go ahead. Don't no, well, I definitely don't think they're chasing, you can tell the difference between them and like a bodybuilder. A bodybuilder's just chasing size, size, yeah. blowout, blowout, blowout. You know, it's like they're – I mean, it is it is crazy how much size that Chris gained in that little bit of time, but he kept it very tight though too. Like yeah. his his waist was still st- stupid fucking small. Yeah. You know, yeah. stomach was sucked in like a bitch. Like I'm Dyson surprised vacuum. they don't have lat spread as a mandatory pose. In a front classic. lat spread I feel like even a rear I think would be a classic pose for yeah. sure. I feel like, especially front, I don't know, I just feel like that <clears> looks <throat> statuesque. I would have liked it, because when I competed, I felt like that was when I hit my individual routine, I felt like would have helped my uh, my case, because right now, what is it, you know, you have your quarter turns, and then you have front double by, you have side chest, rear double by, side chest, and then ab and thigh, and then your favorite classic. What was yours? Favorite classic pose? Yeah, I'm similar to, to Chris's. It's just the um, <laughs> arm behind the head. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I then the, you know, that. Uh, arm flex. So um, didn't hit it as good as Chris, uh, but got a few years uh, I gave him a run for my money. What is he? Twenty four? No, 25, he's twenty five. He's, he's, he got, he's he actually got four same years. birthday as me, which means a day before you. Yeah, four years. You can be that. So Chris yeah. and I were probably in the hospital at the same time, yeah. being born. Oh yeah, dang. <laughs> yeah. They just gave him some like syrup. Yeah. Water. They definitely yeah. gave some syrup. So, yeah. Up in Canada. Yeah, yeah that maple. So, but yeah. uh I don't know. It's interesting to see and I was surprised too that like Big Brahmi won the overall. I feel mm-hmm. like every year I'm like, dang, like if only he could just dial it in. Yeah. But he downsized like twenty see, pounds yeah. Did he? Yeah. Hmm. But I, I don't, don't really know, like, too, too much because I just saw, like, the top something for Olympia. But yeah. I do feel like now I'm just, like, I only pay attention to classic, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I don't really give a shit about the other stuff. I've <laughs> never cared about physique. Yeah. Because it had the bodies going. <laughs> yeah. I, one thing I thought was funny on the buys and tries account, they I was keeping up with it throughout the day. Why do men's physique have an individual routine? I just oh, think it's that's shit. funny. Yeah. yeah. And it same just, thing with bikini. Yeah. Like. Y'all do the same shit. Like, I am done with bikini. Physique, I mean, it's whatever what? if you want to do that. But, like, I mean, there's only so many, <laughs> like, either you got an ass or you don't get get off the stage. Like, it, it's all the same. I mean, bikini, yes, it's nice to look at, well, but judging it, it's like you get so fucking tired of it after watching one class. Bikini's tricky to me because bikini's the only division, men or women, that I feel like you could uh, possibly do natural because the girls are tiny on there. For sure. Even at the pro level. Yeah. They're very tiny, and uh, I mean they're leaner, and I mean you definitely probably need a little something to kind of shred out those last bit. Yeah. But, but they're I, messing with anabolics for sure. I just feel like when I look at who won, yeah, and then I look at you know Sarah Buckley here, or I look at you know Chris's <coughs> girl Casey or whatever. I feel like they all kind of look within the same realm. Versus if I look at like me and Griffin and look at Chris Bumstead and Breon, I'm like, 
way different, you know, way different as far as like size and, yeah. and cuts and lines. It's like, but for bikini, it's like relatively close, you know. Yeah. But then you get to figure and physique and like this. Some of those girls are freaking jacked. Yeah. You know, yoked. That's true. Lifting. But uh, <laughs> it, it's weird. It's weird because I'm sure a bunch of them aren't taking anything. And the ones that are, it's like, why are you even taking it? Like, you don't need to be fucking up I think up you'd be hormones. surprised. I think a lot more girls that uh, I hear from Maddie, like a lot more girls. I mean, they and don't it's take. It's stupid because they don't even, like, what is it? What do you have to show for it? Well, that's like what I mean. Like, in your body they'll and take, fucking they'll still take really low dosages of like tests that are almost pointless, Retarded. and Damn. then they'll take you know drugs to to dry out or lean out. But I feel like it's generally pointless. Uh, I mean, it is. Yeah. Unless like you're, I mean, it'd be different for a guy to to take tests, something your body already naturally already creates. Bit, yeah. It's like fuck, you're just yeah. being optimal. They're lo- bikini. They're loading up on estrogen. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, I, no, it's just it's yeah. kind of ridiculous, but it is what it is. Dang. But uh, I the only person that I really kept up with, and I didn't keep up, it's because I saw his page and that I actually cared about, is uh, Guy Cicinino. Oh yeah, he never went shit. Though. No, he doesn't. I mean, he's never like a big big guy. And this he's, was his I like last how he trains. I don't know. And yeah, he, he fucking page. works though. He yeah. he's a fucking worker for sure. What did he place? I don't I don't know. <laughs> I just saw I yeah. saw all the stage shots and shit. I was like, oh fuck yeah, go yeah. for it. But I knew once I saw He's that fucking age five two guy, that yeah. fucking uh, mini fridge. Oh, Sean, uh, the Clarita. mini fridge. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that dude's a little actor figure. Yeah, yeah, blown, blunt. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know about guy if that was his last one. I don't keep up with anything, man. Tonight. I don't really either, to be honest. Because like I was telling Griffin yesterday, it's like the only physique I would even care to look like is classic, really. And then, you know, even then, it's like, I can't really keep up with this all day. And it's not rel- or relatable to me for the most part yeah. because I'm not, you know, on gear and shit like that. So it's just like, it's cool to look to look at. And, like, Chris is a great person to follow. Um, but, yeah, I'm not going to keep up with it year-round. I'm definitely not going to keep up with Open because I don't really care to look like that, you know? Yeah. yeah that's true. Any words? Uh, I don't know. I like keeping up with it, yeah. but I just like to see, like, I don't know. I just like everything bodybuilding, to be honest. I enjoy it, but I, <laughs> I just, like to see, yeah. like, the the way the tide is turning, because I love, like, the golden era stuff, and I always get excited to see if there's anything that's, like, similar to that, that maybe like, a new athlete or somebody like that that I feel like is a callback to something Well, Patrick Moore was probably the closest thing last Olympia that was like, I think he was like 240 on stage, so it wasn't like that normal 270, like dense, you know, diesel truck. Um, But I know that he took this year off to like size up and kind of move towards that because he's not going to be able to win, you know, being the size that he is. So it's unfortunate, but there are some people like that. But And the other thing is... I just would prefer to have my Instagram feed be bodybuilding and not like put your current, mask on yeah, current yeah. social and political trends. That's so true. best days of I my just, life. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, um, but yeah, so we put in some work yesterday. Do we want to touch? Yeah. On, uh, so I was gonna actually. Uh, I had a thought when I was driving over here, and is uh, more for you, Austin, but kind of all of us because we've talked about it in uh, some aspect. Is like, how do you kind of try and keep um like an even level of motivation when it comes to uh putting in a lot of excessive work for a certain social media thing like for example like i feel like i get excited about let's say like what we did yesterday Mm -hmm. and then we'll post it it doesn't get crazy feedback and then i'm like down in the dumps i don't feel like posting as much because i feel like we put in a lot of work for like a little back but it's like consistently put in a lot of work then i feel like you get it back so like how do you try and what are your thoughts on that I don't know. I think I'm a very simple guy, yeah. and I've said it before. I'm kind of too dumb to quit. I I enjoy it. I think it's yeah. funny. I think all right, the skits are funny. The pictures are cool. If you don't like it, fuck you. Well, this is my <laughs> thought on it. I mean, too. it's me. It's my it page. Is. It's my brand. It's like... Think of like... I don't know. Think of big brands and think of like big ad campaigns. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sure they get a lot of engagement, but certain things that just feel like very sterile and corporate it's like you know that might get 
a top TV slot, but yeah. it's like, is it like from the heart? Is it organic? Other things like that. So for me, for a lot of this stuff, like I just love feeling like we're breathing new life into like what we're already doing. You yes. know? So it's always fun to just like plan a new shoot, plan a new idea on like something that's already here or like how we can present that better. And then I, well, it's not really like my product per se, but it's like if it gets feedback, if it doesn't get feedback, I don't care. Same with like what we've talked about with IGTV videos. Mm -hmm. Like they don't really get the engagement that a normal post would, but it's like, you know, the fun was in creating that. And then like whatever comes after that, you know, I've already kind of like satisfied myself by making it. And Mm -hmm. like if, if you're not affected by that, then (laughs) I don't care. But it's kind of, it just scratched the itch for me, you know? I feel like that's the right way to look at it because I feel like, you know, yeah, I mean, if you're only doing something for that immediate gratification and that immediate success, then I feel like you're never going to, like, fully scratch that itch. And I feel like, you know, you need to be putting in uh, the consistent kind of excitement and work into something before it, before it comes to fruition and people start to actually appreciate, you know, the extra time and things you put in. And yep. um, at the end of the day, like you said, it's got to be more, like, passion-driven <laughs> um, internally rather than uh, for likes or, you know, that. Yeah, I, I mean, we do it. Everything that we do, like when we're sitting down thinking about shit, it's our own like original thoughts yeah. for the most part. It is yeah. like us. And I think at the end of the day, I can look back and be like, damn, that was fun. That was us. I'm not like anxious being like, oh man, I'm chasing the next number or next likes or this or that. It's just, hey, we're doing us having fun and hopefully people gravitate towards what we're doing and obviously want to you know, yeah. see more. And the other thing I would say too is like, you know, you do a good job of making regular like ad related <clears throat> posts in Photoshop or other things like that. But think about if like that was your entire like company life cycle of just like order a new product, order a new flavor, and then just like, you know, put up a quick photo here and there of that or like put something together in Photoshop and like would you really like look forward to the growth of that versus like I still think about when we did that old overcome video and we went to like four different locations and like shot a bunch of people and yeah it didn't really like catch on sometimes like we want but it's like you know it's fun to at least plan things like that and stage things like that and kind of like it helps almost make you it opens new doors as to what you feel like it can appeal to. I feel like if you really brainstorm, like, what is this product made for? Who does this appeal to? Other things like that. Because mm-hmm. I feel like when we did that, it's almost like, I don't know. For me, I think about, wow, well, like, I never thought about other uses it can be besides just, you know, as an intro workout or something yeah. like that that people can use it for. So it's fun to kind of just, I don't know, brainstorm in that regard. But then also I feel like, you know, with the walk the line stuff and the suits or other things like that, it's fun to kind of just give the product like more of a personality as well, yeah. too. I guess you know my I mean? challenge that I was kind of getting at um, is like, I feel like the spikes are there, but I, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, I think all that's uh, great and I think it's there, but man, I'm fucking spacing out here, like having like a verbal <laughs> diarrhea. What I'm saying is, I I feel like. You know, we have that surge of, let's say, the Walk the Lime skit. And then it's like a few weeks of, I feel like, less uh, less me- uh, content creation, right? The and then it's back, another yeah. spike of like, oh, let's, you know, do the shoot we did yesterday. And then it's like weeks of like nothing. And then I feel like, you know, trying to mellow out or raise, you know, those those dips um, so it's a more stable line of, uh, of creation. Not every day, per se, but... Um, do you think that would be more realistic for somebody that was full-time with it? Like... Like what in the position saying? we're in, like, would would we all be able to get together? I get what you're saying. Weekly or yeah. daily, every other day to be able to do well, something like I think, like I that? think no, but I think, I think, man, I kind of view it as like seasons. You know, you got to go through winter and appreciate I mean, I'd lo- summer. I'd love to crank out content like that, but you would need a team specifically just doing that daily for sure if you wanted consistency. I feel like I'm not verbalizing. Well, do you feel like that at all as far as equipment goes now that we've kind of finished everything with the gym and like yeah, gotten so a bunch I'll, of stuff, I'll, I'll there's nothing it, coming in? I'll describe it in my personal Instagram sense or like uh, like gem sense. Is It's like, um, you know, 
<laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. I'm no, having I such see a, what you mean. I a see what you mean. Block. It's it's a big high, yeah. and then everything else in comparison yeah, was, feels like it's a little. I mean, bit I agree messy. with you. Yeah, we do have a, like a lull period every now and then. There's like, whoa, yeah. Even I noticed it. Like I was like, damn, I haven't posted in like two and a half weeks on. Yeah, I guess that's page. what I'm getting as is it as it's like you know instead of shooting for like okay really cool dope video and then three weeks of nothing it's but like then, let's have cool video every like. You know, or post every four or five days. That it's would like be sick. it's just. I feel like Wouldn't you know, be. you get really excited about like, oh, I'm excited to drop this content, yeah. and then when it doesn't perform how you feel like it it could, relates to the effort put in, then I feel like it almost de or not demotivates you, but it doesn't give you that immediate incentive to like make another video. For example, like if I make a really good like workout post, I'm like shit. I might record another one yeah. because I know people will like probably like this one. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. But, I never get, like, in the dumps about it. I mean, yeah, it sucks that, like, oh, man, it probably didn't reach as many people because you can obviously see from, like, how many people actually viewed it versus liked it. Yeah. Like, let's say for the example, when you posted the Party in the Gym video to your Iron Build account, it got, like, 800, 900 views. Posted the Gym Flow two days later, it got, like, 150 views. Yeah. So it's like, fuck, we slept, the, we shit the bed on that. Like, yeah, like... I should have posted her first. I'm just kidding. Yeah, but, next uh, time I'm just going to yeah, send it. Yeah, send it to me, please. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, you know, that was like, oh, fuck. That was a cool event. I wish more people would have saw that because they could get hyped for the next one. But it is what it is. I mean, it's going to go on regardless with or without people. I'm still going to have a good time. Yeah. Fuck you. But, you know, at the end of the day, I, I don't really get, I don't know, I don't get hung up on it. I'm always like, well, when we do have another idea, I'm like, man, I can't wait to do that one. And it's like, yeah. when I post it, it's like, oh, fuck, yeah. it didn't. I wish more people saw that, but on to the next. Yeah. I'm too dumb to quit. Like, I'm not going to, I guess, like, oh, I'm just going to keep on doing it. Well, the other thing I would say, too, is, like, you know, think back to, to, like, everything that we do that, like, we go a little bit further in as far as, like, creative or effort or other things like that. I feel like that then just raises the bar for, like, what's considered basic as well, too. Yeah. To where, like, the more effort that gets put in then like the you know the day-to-day -day stuff i feel like kind of gets elevated that much more yeah. just a little bit it doesn't feel like sense. we're going like it doesn't feel like it's that much of an effort yeah 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 to like do think something. about even with like product like new flavor and it's just like a um i don't want to say quick turnaround but like you know you already had that kind of ready to go yeah but then think of how cool the new like label and c case and everything looks because you've already put the effort into the other ones yep. to like be creative with them. Yeah. So even though it's like kind of a, you know, it's not like you're just waiting on this one or like thinking on it for like six months or something like that. But like the sand standard has already been set by mm -hmm. the other ones that you have done. For if sure. that makes sense. It does. Does that, you know what I mean by that though? Like it's almost like when we have the spikes, then that like, the rising tide lifts all boats. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think I just totally, Such like... God. Uh, I think I just, like, went in so many, like, vague directions on this conversation that I didn't even know where I was at. And then, uh, you know, but uh, it is what it is. It you is know. what it is. Dang. I, I think I got something out of that, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we do have some deals, speaking of, like, gym flow and whatnot. We're doing the 12 Days of Christmas deals on the site, and... Obviously, we cranked through a few days. If you aren't signed up for the newsletter, Time make sure you are. to pay the are. bills. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're trying to finish out yeah. this year strong. I know a lot of yeah. people are just, you know, busy Christmas shopping and whatnot, but we want to be able to throw out some cool deals to finish the yeah. year off big, strong, and you'll be able to stock up before, you know, the new year comes and we're back yeah. in action. Birthday but, on Wednesday, too. Birthday is on Wednesday. How does it I'd feel like to, to not talk be about it. <laughs> over 30 now. He's been, well, he's been th 30. I guess 30, well, saying, but it's not. Well, it's more than 30. I guess it's right at the home. It sucks. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Like, you're 30, or I'm going to be 31, and it's like, fuck. Like, I think about, like, let's say I've got my mom and dad. They're a little bit older. They're almost 60, but it's like, damn. Like, I feel like just not too long ago, they were in their 40s, and 40s yeah. only eight years away, That's nine years away from me. That's what makes me feel old when I think about my parents. And I remember when I was in elementary school, I'd be like, yeah, my parents are 38. And I'm like, oh. I'm like, I'm like 20 now. It's like, fuck. Yeah. But they do, I do yeah. like understand and believe when people are like, when they're in their 40s and 50s, like, well, I still, mentally, I'm still like a young ass kid. Yeah. I mean, I'm 31. I still feel like I'm 23. That's yeah. good. Besides a couple new aches and pains, like, I still yeah, feel yeah. 23 mentally. That's good. Still down to get down. So, <laughs> <laughs> that ain't, ain't as good as I once was. <laughs> yeah. Not as once. good as I ever was. Yeah. Good once, though. 
Um, but yeah, it's, it's weird, man. And I feel like I haven't done anything with my life yet. What? So, it, well, not to say that, I mean, you know, to what I would expect myself by 30, 31. Oh, yeah. It's like, fuck me. Hey, but think about it this way. Could have gone a couple different options. You could still have been pre-rec Austin. Oh, yeah. Or you could have not gone this route at all, and you could be working as, like, you know, a GNC manager. But, yeah, instead. But probably that or some some bullshit so you know target. what let's dive into that if uh if you weren't lifting griffin what do you mm-hmm. think would be like your next like route as a job like, let's say you couldn't lift anymore uh well i originally went to college to be like a <laughs> a park ranger oh really you go to college for that no. Well, <laughs> I went I went and I was no, like No, I tried. <laughs> well, I was in college and I was in Montana and I was like, okay, I love like the outdoors in this area. So like let me get a job that can let me be outdoors. But um I guess on in that vein though, if I couldn't lift, I'd probably try to do something like with National Geographic or like something related like shooting outdoors for a magazine. What about you, Austin? I don't no more know. supplements, no more personal training. Yeah, like, it's real tough to think because... ABC store? <laughs> no. Working out the courthouse? No, that, I would not want that. Uh, I enjoy food a lot, so maybe some type of restaurant, maybe. I don't think I'd be a cook. I don't know what I'd be. <laughs> I, I do like, like I wine. I think I could see him at, like, a barbecue. Hard. Hard. Fuck hard with a winery, like uh, doing tastings and shit. That would be I would cool. love to talk wine and just sip on that shit all but day. But are you really into like the deep, deep about wine? Yeah, or you I, just I enjoy lo- like tasting. I, no, oh well, I enjoy different wines, but I don't. I mean, if, I feel like if I took the time to learn more about them, I think I would yeah. because I'd enjoy. Because I like, feel like y'all, y'all don't give sh- uh, two shits about coffee, even though it's a similar vein of mm, wine. That's peasant well, swill. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> I enjoy the cups that you make, but I don't. I guess I'm not. Do you get what I'm saying though? It's I like, do. It's like where but it's like the intricacies of tasting. It's but the thing is, I won't like I won't fuck with shit wines. Okay. So like Ooh, classy. But, but the thing is, like I don't I don't have that same same standard for coffee. I'll drink a Folgers yeah. in a heartbeat and not care. Yeah. Whatever gets my my jingles jingling in the yeah. morning, you know. Yeah. But the wine, like I do enjoy the taste, the sip, the aerating of it, the the different notes that you get, or how it opens up after you let the air hit it a little bit. So we got the Austin Page Winery. And I we think got, I'd fuck with wine. Yeah. We got uh, I was Park Ranger say, though, Griffin. Or if beer. he was like a, beer. a chef, I feel like I can see him being in like a kitchen, and like something's like too hot in the pan. He's like, oh shit, and just like <laughs> dips his cup that he's drinking out of to like yeah, <laughs> ease out the, the bucked heat. up in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> someone's fucking things. He's like, oh fuck. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I'd ever cook for sure, for sure, unless I'm air frying everything. Yeah, that but would. wine or beer, I'm. A, I like to drink. Oh, I, I don't want to sound like an alcoholic. I enjoy I, I a like beverage. To drink. I enjoy yeah. a beverage, yeah. so I don't think I'd have a tough time climbing into something like that. Me and two friends used to talk about if they opened a brewery, like I'd do the media. One would be like the brewmaster, and then one would handle like the business side of things. Yeah, and I always still that say like, like that's, that's, that's what back. we do that's at Jim <laughs> Kinda. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, we need to start selling what beers. About you, Brock? I was thinking about it. So I feel like it would change from like every two years. If you ask me that question, it'd probably be different. I feel like right now I'd probably go into like something with coffee, similar to you with wine. Yeah, he'd um, be over the table. <laughs> just because I feel like it has a sense of like craftsmanship, and then also, uh, you know, there's like a service or product for someone. Because um, yeah. I mean, I enjoy editing, but I just I don't know what I'd. I do with that other than what I'm already doing, um, but it's a tough one though. You know, I feel like passions just kind of like and hobbies. I feel like they kind of just come to you at, at random times in your life, and you never know when one will be there. Uh, yeah. For example, it's like, and that's what I, I tell Maddie too a lot of times because, you know, she said like the other day, like, oh, you have a lot of you know things you're into, whether it be coffee or lifting or running or these other things. But it's like all just from like sometimes you know. I'll see Nick Bear or like I'll see a friend of mine like running. I was like, oh, let me let me like get into that. And you never know whether it's going to be a quick hobby that you'll ditch or whether it'll be something that you really enjoy. Um, it's kind of like sometimes when I'm watching the UFC fights, they'll be like, oh yeah, this guy, you know, six years ago he was delivering a pizza and he was like, what is, what's what's going on in that TV? And he saw his MMA fights and now he's fighting in the UFC. It's like little things like that, you know, that happen in your life. I feel like mm-hmm. you end up finding a passion for. Yeah. 
I don't. Uh, like, how'd you get into wine other than just drinking the shit? Did Sarah, <laughs> Sarah get you into just, it? Yeah, met Sarah. I never drank probably a glass in my she life. She was big into wine. And Dang. she was big into wine, but very, very sweet. So, like, Moscato's shit that's like grape juice like. Yeah. Fucking super sweet. And we slowly but surely just started dabbling. We're like, oh, that's too sugary. It's way too sweet. And we started dabbling with a little bit more dry, more dry. And now, if that shit doesn't make my fucking mouth feel like <laughs> desert dry, I don't want it. Dang. Like, have you felt that way about coffee too? Yeah, no. This morning I was drinking um, a Colombian, and uh, I finished that and before squats, and so I was warming up and getting ready, and I had to swish some water in my mouth just because it, it it felt kind of like dry in my mouth from mm. uh, that coffee. But a good coffee will leave a nice aftertaste, you know, in your mouth and kind of coat your uh, your gums. But I agree you with know. you guys because uh, I would say really. I'm sure you guys are the same way. A lot of things I'm fine to just be frugal with and, like, get, like, secondhand or cheap or, like, budget or store brand or whatever. Yeah. Two things would now make an exception are just camera equipment. And then um, I would say, like, usually food, too. I try to get, like, at least high-quality, like, meats or other things like that. But one thing I've been liking a lot lately is just making, like, pasta dishes or other things like that. But high quality like ricotta cheese or other cheeses i, saw I that love like yeah you can well, have some cottage cheese if you want that was like 750 uh, and i've tried now like other regular kinds because i love to like mix it in with the sauce and especially some pink salt some pepper on top but like the good quality one that's like pasture raised and like other things like that just like floats on your tongue i can't really describe it but it's like not a very strong flavor, but like that almost makes it like even better. So I will say it's that interesting like, interesting though that like you almost refine your own tastes enough to where like something that you used to really like, like just almost becomes like I don't know nasty or something right. in comparison. Yeah, and that's like a mild example because it's not like I eat that every day. No, but it's a good example. I do go out of my way to get it now because like now that I've had that. I enjoy it so much that, like... You have a taste for the sweeter things in life. I think it's similar to, like, now when I look at, you know, someone drinking Folgers or Starbucks, I'm like, you're drinking shit, you know, because I've experienced something better. Um, Same deal as, you know, us drinking, let's say, these drinks versus, or good old all or nothing, rather than a C4. You know, where, like, you understand, like... Oh, I'm paying more more of a price, but it's like worth it because the experience that you're gonna have. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. So, I think that's there. I, one thing that I feel like with food is, um, to your point, I feel like I'd like to get more into the little intricacies and take the time that I normally don't to like mix in more flavors and more things at you know at my meals rather than just beef and rice. But yeah. like, let's mix in some ricotta cheese or make something like. Um, have you been to Meza? Yeah, yeah, something yeah, like kava, absolutely. like those. To me, those Mediterranean bowls just feel so good because there's couscous, there's rice, there's chicken, there's you know feta cheese, there's uh, hummus. There's all these different flavors that are hitting you that make it really good, and then you also are getting so many different minerals and I feel like nutrients from those different foods. And I feel like it just is a more wholesome meal. It sits good in my stomach, makes me feel good, yeah. um, rather than just pounding in some Eggo waffles to get calories in. You know. Yeah, and that's the thing too. I feel like is with meal prepping all the time. Like, I just like to kind of have a feeling of caring more about it, like, when I do make one-off meals. Like, when my brother came over the other day and we made just, like, you know, steak and potatoes, but it was, like, a tomahawk ribeye and some, like, crispy, like, duck fat roasted potatoes. But it was nice to just, like, feel like, wow, this is going to be a nice meal and like let me make sure i try really hard to like make it as good as it can be for like the money that i'm paying for it but i feel like for just usual meal prep i'll just like turn the pan on medium dump the ground beef in and then like go do something else and be like oh shit yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's overcooking so i kind of like just having the at least like appreciation or like caring about what you're doing and to like make it a good experience it's kind of that way with anything like even when you're doing like laundry like sure like you and me could just grab our clothes and throw it somewhere and you know it's all going on your body the same but having something neatly like organized or folded in your dresser it just makes your whole like day or experience just feel better you know i feel like we talked about this before um but you know it's those little things of preparation or organization that just make um, it just makes it worthwhile. It makes you, I don't know, it makes you feel like more fulfilled, you know. Yeah. Not got another task. 
Yeah, I agree. Things like that. That's true. Makes you feel good when you're going through the motions. Yeah. Makes your day a whole lot better when you start that way, too. I've noticed. Updates on uh, training from anyone? Fuck no. Anything new? Same old, same old. Same old shit? Just putting it in, beating my fucking body up. <laughs> yeah. Did an yeah. early workout this morning. Not a fan. Um. Yeah, y'all, y'all <laughs> hate the early work, morning workouts. But listen to his uh, his pre-workout smoothie. This is where I think he kind of fucked up, because I don't know what oh, you eat. I know you eat a lot. Mine's monstrous. Yeah, you eat a monster meal. I eat a mild I'm still, meal. I still got it in my stomach right now. He had like a, a smoothie, but it had kiwi strawberries? Or? No, kiwi, pineapple, pineapple. oats, whey, water. That's a lot of uh, acidity, though, from the pineapple and the uh, the kiwi. And I told him that's probably why it was hitting mm-hmm. his stomach a little bit. Because I do food is meant to be eaten, not drank. <laughs> yeah, I do oats, peanut butter, chocolate whey, and almond milk, and that seems to go through me pretty well and doesn't sit like a rock. And yeah. I feel decently energized. I will say though, like I more on squats than on any other body part in my lower body. When I hit like rep six, seven, eight. It's like my legs are on like empty, and I I like feel like they're almost dry per se, or they're like empty of like energy, and I really have to like push those last reps. It's not like they don't have the strength to do it. It's just that they don't like want to. It's like they're turned off. That's but rep, a good thing, right? Kind of, but it's like pushing them. It's more of an energy thing than it is like strength thing. So it's kind of like I feel like if I was um, hitting them later in the day. I wouldn't be fatiguing as quickly, but like reps one through five go smooth. And other exercises, generally, it's like the same rep to rep, but it's like a it's like an obvious transition to me, five to six from like how it feels when I'm pushing off those legs. You know yeah. what I mean? Do I you know. do you ever try and carb load at night before you go to bed? Your last meal being a heavy carb meal, so you have energy in the morning. Sometimes I naturally do that, like the day before a leg day, um, like. The meal right no, before you hop in bed, like fucking. Well, the meal I go carbs. before bed is is a decent meal. It's the cottage cheese. It doesn't have that much carbs. Oh, yeah, any carbs, dude. But well, there's a decent bit of protein. Do carbs fast. even like sit in your system like that long to where you can like have do. it the night before and like that'll energize you the next day? I think it depends. Well, I mean, obviously you're still be carbs. hungry, but it, yeah, it does depend on the carbs. But like you're refueling your muscles with glycogen. It, it should, doesn't just it go away in six glycogen, hours, you yeah. know, unless you're sleeping fourteen hours. Yeah. Most people are only sleeping six to seven hours. That it yeah. should still be there. I imagine it would. I mean, that's I mean that's the idea behind carb loading with like uh, endurance yeah. sports and other they things load like up that. the day before. Yeah. But another thing I was thinking about too, because I was out of breath on my uh, sets of eight today on squats, was I was like, you know, I feel like with all the running I do, I'd imagine that like you know I wouldn't be out as out of breath. But then I remembered it's like this is completely different energy systems. You know, you have your glycolysis or whatever where you're running through like your sugars for your mm-hmm. squats and then like running 10 miles or whatever is totally different it's system aerobic energy system. yeah it's using my aerobic system so it's like yeah. you're being you know, pulled in two directions i know it's time to choose mm. i know <laughs> i'm really in love with how like my my legs are starting to look down i don't know if it's if it's it's got to be partly to towards the running but i feel like i'm getting a lot more um even with bulking some decent cuts from the side, especially my hamstrings. Getting cuts, getting yeah. cut up. Fresh shave. I feel like it's got, yeah, fresh shave. I, I mean, feel like it's got to be. I'm going to shave mine tonight. I'm going to do it. I feel like it's got to be from the running. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. But running's been going well. Other than that, my uh, lifting strain's been mostly the same. Uh, but just trying to make progress week to week. Nice. Um, I don't know. Nothing too crazy as far as that. Will anything mind. change, like, mindset-wise? going into the new year as far as that or just same kind of like week to week so kind of tricky one thing i'm considering is is switching my um my leg day and my chest and back day so like right now i'm running my long run is on thursday and um one second guys all right bad boys bad boys (laughs) What (laughs) what about you austin Oh. I know we've touched on New Year goals and stuff already. Yeah, but. and I haven't put any for myself personally, but I feel like I definitely should here in the next few days. All right, I'm back. Sorry, guys. This podcast, I feel like we're, we're going to have to plan this better in the future. Ain't, to ain't, I'm not chopping here. shit. It's yeah. just going to grow uh, as it is. Okay, point is, uh, so as far as running, so right now I'm doing long run, so it's like 10 plus miles on a Thursday. Friday would be legs, and then Saturday's chest and back. So obviously if you're like, damn, you're running that many miles on your legs Thursday. Next day, you're supposed to do legs, which would be deadlift, which is a big goal of mine this year is hit a 500-pound deadlift. So I'm like, damn, that's just going to, like, fuck with my progress. So what I'm thinking about doing is doing my long run, do chest and back on Friday, because that would still be, like, three full days from Tuesday's chest and back 
So I should be recovered to go and then do legs on Saturday. Would you ever deviate from the push-pull leg and do like upper and lower or like a full body? No. Um, the only thing I would consider, which I don't think I want to do, is I, I just really feel like I need to train legs twice in a week to make good progress. And I think it's becoming more difficult the more I run. Like I'm considering adding in a fourth running day that's somewhat light and just throw it in on one of my upper body days because like anything like three to six miles doesn't really fatigue my legs that much at this point um and as long as i slowly weave it in my recovery is pretty good it's just you know those longer runs really kind of take it out of me or like back to back days Mm -hmm. so i don't know but i feel like i want to keep that i feel like that's the biggest challenge for me right now is still being priority lifting but Fitting in the two leg days is the issue. It's not really like the lifting or the kind of lifting. It's more the, the two leg days. But What you um, need is one of those little glider things that's non-impact to get your runs in. Oh, like a so gazelle? It's like, the gazelle? Yeah, yeah. those Arc things. Trainer. Yeah. Yeah, fuck, yeah. But um, that's going well, though. My goals are going pretty well. I'm, I'm trying to uh, meet with my, my friend that's the D1 runner ever should be back in town this coming week and so i want to get with him and just figure out exactly like how i should be structuring my workouts from week to week because it's like i don't know i feel like it is as simple as like but does he lift though no not that much but i'm not worried about the lifting as much as the running you take that back (laughs) but uh i don't know does he even lift i don't know what about an a1 runner Sounds like you're messing with a D1. So let me ask you this, Austin, not to not to get too off topic, but what do you feel like? Because I know we've touched on in a couple different podcasts now, like as far as goals or like lifting related stuff, and you say that um, you don't really like have any or like don't really care too much, just kind of going through it. But what inspired you to do the summer shredding? That's tough. When I was thinking back on that. I hadn't challenged myself in a while, Mm -hmm. and I think the time before that, Summer Shredding was 2018, so I competed my first show 2013 when I was 23, 24, and ever since then, for like four or five years, I was just like, eh, just going through the motions, just almost like I do now, but a little bit less Mm -hmm. intent. And then I watched a Christian Guzman video, which I back then I guess I was watching. I was watching a little bit of everything, but I watched his a couple times, and I was like, "Oh shit, summer shredding! I'd like to try it." And then I was like, "Maybe it'll get me, you know, motivated to push myself a little harder, mm-hmm. diet back down, see what I look like." And that's what I did. But uh, I didn't expect to do a show out of it. Obviously, oh, okay. that was you know three weeks before the end of it that I was like, "Oh, well, I guess I should do a show." Since I'm doing all this work, but I guess the main motivation was just not having any like intent with yeah. working out. I was just going through the motions. I was like, man, let me try and challenge myself, which I feel like I need to do now a little bit because going off that, the way I train now is just I come in and I try and push my body as hard as I can mm-hmm. with like mindless, just push it as hard as I fucking can for three or four exercises so like today i just came in i was like all right i'm gonna do legs and i'm gonna get on the leg press and push as much fucking weight as i can for 10 reps like that was my number in my head 10 reps let me put as much weight as i can to where i barely get 10 my shit's about to give out yeah and i did that for the squats i did that for the lunges and the leg extension it was just like full fatigue mindless probably not the way i should train but i just i i feel like i'm doing something when i'm pushing it yeah like to that point where i'm like oh fuck my (laughs) shit's about to explode and when you did that, did you work with anyone when you did the summer shredding, or did you do everything yourself? No, Joe did all my dieting for me. I went vegan. What about training? <laughs> huh? What about training? Uh, no, I, I still trained myself for the most part. <laughs> yeah. so it's funny you went vegan. <laughs> yeah, I went vegan Good for like a deal. year, year and a half. I um, remember you used to carry around a ton of bagels and squeezable jelly. Yeah, I did that. I'd usually <laughs> do like two bagels and a fuck ton of jelly pre-workout. Yeah. And then post-workout, i eat like three or four bananas and like two oranges. Fuck. Yeah. How did you guys get wrapped in these weird? Di- have you ever followed a weird diet? Because when I was talking, when we were talking to Rachel, I was All like, "All carbs." I was They're- like, "I get you're following this coach, but when he tells you you get you get two miles and it's like these weird requirements, do you ever look at him and you're like, fuck that?" So the my- weirdest thing I would say I ever followed is I did the vertical diet from Stan Efferding. And that's a, a balanced bit. diet, though. Yeah. Like that's that's not really that weird. Well, it's, that's it's pretty started, balanced. I would say like I didn't really stick with it. I did it for probably like you know three months or something yeah. like that. 
Um, but the biggest thing I kind of took from it is just structuring your diet more so to make sure you're including enough like micronutrients. Because yeah. before I was just thinking in terms of macros with like a vegetable <laughs> to yeah. like get micronutrients. So that kind of just made me think about, wow, there's like other things to like prioritize for certain reasons. Yeah, greens and reds. When I did that vegan though uh, diet, it wasn't like – I was when like when Rachel she was like very restrict it was very low calorie mine I was still eating yeah. three thousand calories a day but you all fruits protein, and vegetables right? uh, whatever trace protein I was getting from the egg whites and you know rice bagels oatmeal so I was still getting like when I first started I was still getting a little over a hundred grams of protein a day but at the end I think I was getting like sixty grams of protein like the last three or four weeks which if you think about it it may be like two weeks out from a show you're not growing you yeah. want to you're just trying to maintain with calorie and trying to fill out. So dropping the protein, I think, is smart for any anybody probably a week out because that's only going to bloat you. Yeah. I mean, for I real, know, carbs carbs, is, and fats, that's what's going to fill yeah, you out. You carbs and fats. you need protein to rebuild what you rebuild. were breaking down still in the gym. Keto. Uh, I'm, you well, you're it, not growing, yeah. but you're still repairing and rebuilding what yeah, you've broken down. I guess so. Because otherwise but, you're going to deteriorate even faster. For sure. And I think a lot of people maybe, you know, for me – I think I needed a little bit higher fats than what I had because my fats were almost that whole year of 30 grams oh straight, 30 gosh. grams a day. Yeah. You get that? 30, 35 grams. Of of cheese. Yeah. 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 No, test was high. Uh -oh. <laughs> test was high. <laughs> Not naturally. Fat, fat, fat was low, though. And I didn't have any problems, uh, you know, dick-wise or whatever, but I'm sure if a natural person would like, yeah. be like, like oh fuck yeah. mentally I was drained though I definitely noticed I, I my energy like natural energy I feel like you know you are missing some B vitamins and stuff like that so I didn't yeah. bring that in but I you know like any other diet I dieted down from 3,000 calories down to I think I got as low as like 1,800 for like the last week Dang. which sucked but you know I don't know man it's, it's weird and I'm glad I did try it and realized it sustainably isn't for me yeah and I think a lot more people maybe should dabble and try and find stuff, unless it's stupidly idiotic, which it could have that could have been in some people's eyes. But yeah, I tried it; wasn't for me. You know, whatever. That's cool. Yeah, I was just curious, just because uh, I didn't know if anything like inspired you initially to do the summer shredding. Or Christian <laughs> Guzman, man, dang that guy. Fucking as far stud. as me to do anything. Stud. Does it? Do you ever feel not to continue to harp on that, but just like being in here? Do you ever feel like you need to then have like a physique related goal or like training related goal, like to work towards, or do you kind of just feel like you know it's just kind of like? That was be a question I was going to ask because I feel like, not to speak in absolutes, but I almost feel like there has to be a goal, whether it's specific or loose, or you kind of just. You just drift. And even if you don't, let's say, like, reach over, it doesn't have to be, like, a show per se, but it could be as simple as, hey, I'm doing 80s on incline dumbbell press. Let's get to 85s or 90s, you know? Something to work towards. Or I mean, you can naturally, like, improve, but I feel like at least you have a direction. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I feel like I do need that. Yeah. And I, I haven't had that since Summer mm -hmm. Shredding in 2018. Ever since then, I have literally just come in. Always push as much weight as I can without having pain. Yeah. And that's it. It is what it is. It's not my smartest, but that's like the dumb idiot in me. It's like, all right, let me, as long as I work out and I push myself, I made it another day. Yeah. <laughs> like I was explaining to him, I don't know when you walked away, like today's leg day was just, hey, come in, leg press as many, as much weight as I could for 10 reps, four sets. And that's like, that was the goal. Yeah. Like, that's probably the smartest. I probably need bigger goals than that instead of just trying to blow my body yeah, yeah, out yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it for me internally mentally it's like oh man i pushed myself out that felt good today like my knees kill me my <sighs> my legs kill me right now like yeah whatever it's probably not the best training method but i yeah, i need to set some goals for real and i think not only that but i would be able to like uh i'd have more not to say going on for myself, but we talked about it. Having goals, it gives you more to post about. It gives you a little bit more intention with your day. Um, a little bit more, I guess, internal motivation as well because you actually do have something to look forward to instead of just like, all right, I got to make it through this workout today. It's yeah. all right, this workout's going to get me to this point, you know, this A to B, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And I was talking to one of my clients about that because she's been doing a lot more of like painting. Um, and that's never really been something she's done before, but... I, I really like just hearing about like she'll take a class or like take a trip that's like a seminar or something like that and I almost wonder like that price of like continuing to 
keep your enthusiasm high. Like, <clears throat> I think it's worth it to continue to, like, you know, buy things here or there or, like, delve into different avenues all under that same umbrella just to be able to, like, keep your, your spirits up in, yeah. in regards to, like, what you're doing. Because I almost feel like, for me, if I feel like I kind of know everything I need to do and, like, that's it, like, you know, there's no other thing I feel like I can expand on, and then it just becomes, like, dead weight, like, oh, another day. especially sort of being, uh, like, natural for, I feel like, you and me, we're at a point where it's, like, the gains are so minimal at this point that it's, like, you kind of need that, okay, eight weeks, I'm going to write up this program for my arms and try this new maybe rep range and these exercises and let's you know really try and blow up these arms and then each training session when you're hitting you know that body part you're like you know really focused intently because you're like you know let's see what i can do right yeah I hey, feel like you haven't had goals. 30 years of waking up at three and power bodybuilding yet though oh. so you don't know your full natural potential brother yeah I visualize. yeah <laughs> shout out to michael Hearn. Yeah. <laughs> but, well like uh, when when y'all are especially y'all both have goals i'm sure and it's like I know you already mentioned how you get your goals. They can be random at, at first, you know, like the running thing. You just saw a guy do it, and you're like, let me dabble with it. But, like, for me, I tried to think over the past weekend. I was like, I do need a goal. Like, I, I have thought about that to myself for this upcoming year, and I shouldn't set it for, like, the first of the year like most average people do. But, hey, the time's played out that way. I might as well do something. And it's like, I don't know where to set myself. Like, should I just do bodybuilding because that's what I know? Or like, what What should I, like, I don't, I feel it's lost. And I feel like tactical. other people could maybe learn something or like maybe from y'all, like how would I, how should I go about picking a goal like for myself? Should I just get on there and see what hits or, I don't know, because I do want to do something different. I do want to challenge myself, but I don't, it's like, should I just, all right, let's pick another show. The biggest thing I would say is thinking about. Even though I like, hate bodybuilding, like, the stage portion of it if you kind of categorize your interests really try to break down like what appeals to you about those interests and then what you feel like the like the key components of that interest are if that makes sense like say for example like when me and brock were looking a lot more into like firearm related stuff earlier this year it was really helpful to kind of think about that in terms of like the two factors of growth of this are accuracy and speed and so like if I can do more things to improve my accuracy over a designated like time or something like that and we didn't get too too far into it which we will that soon. will soon One month out. yeah but think about too like how can I train to run. like <laughs> be more accurate under the constraints of speed if that yeah. makes sense so like it's one thing to hit the target but like hitting five shots in the same target in five seconds or something like that but I would say like think about like for example for me with photography like i have certain things that i really like about it or that like keeps it appealing to me yeah. and then certain like tenets of that that like i enjoy like i enjoy doing like hiking related stuff i enjoy doing camping related stuff that like that's kind of what keeps me refreshed in terms of that so like how can i kind of structure the coming year around those things like improving composition improving like your your color palette or something like yeah. that but under those th those tenets of like nature or outdoors or other things like that and in the same vein for like fitness like i enjoyed bodybuilding and i had gotten away from like the the feeling of like training for muscle engagement like training to like maximally stimulate that muscle versus just like put numbers on on a board basically yeah. so for me, I feel like that's what keeps me lifting. That's what keeps me looking forward to my lifts is that feeling of getting like the best pump ever in that particular muscle group. And I have a way that I feel like I know I want to look at some point in my life. So like if I can structure everything around that goal, but like make the day to day in that previous goal I just mentioned, you know what I mean? I do. So I feel like with all your hobbies or interests, you need to figure out like why you like it. And then, like, what the structure or, like, the tenets of that hobby are that, like, make you able to grow within that, you know? Yeah. I think that's great advice, and I think it's way more in-depth than I would have answered it. Um, yeah. The one thing Picture that I... your alternate reality. I know. <laughs> yeah, I think you're an alternate universe. The only thing that I would add to it is uh, how I kind of look at some things, whether it's naturally or, or I, I literally try and search for it this way, is I like, I like picking things that I'm not good at you know that i that i'm interested in so there has to be some interest but picking something i'm not good at like running never been fucking good at running right now y'all might think i'm like doing pretty good running these miles but i look at my pace and i'm like maybe for the average person like pace is okay 
But, you know, I look at some of the other people I follow, and yes, some of them are more elite runners, but they're running like a six, seven minute average pace, you know, lower heart rate. I'm running at like a freaking nine, nine thirty, ten minute pace, and I feel like that's shit. And so I'm like, damn, I want to be better because I feel like I'm not good. So it kind of gives me like something to like level up on, yeah. and then it's like, okay, let's try something different. It's kind of like sometimes, you know, I, I'll get really plateaued or plateaued on barbell overhead press, right? So then I'm like, fuck this exercise let's move on to dumbbell overhead press then get better at that then when you start you know hitting a wall with that switching to other exercise and I, I feel like i do that with other muscle groups as well is you know picking a new exercise or picking a new hobby that you're not good at and then trying your best to be better at that it's kind of motivating because you're like damn i suck at this well i won't suck in a few weeks or months after working at this yeah. you know so i feel like i still suck at everything <laughs> well then you get a lot of things to improve on. <laughs> yeah for sure and it's like like I don't even have time to focus on that because I still suck at this, that, and that. It's like what? I mean, but maybe I'm not as bad. Just like you think, like maybe you're not as bad as it's all you seen from the outside. But yeah. it's like shit. I don't know. Maybe maybe like you were talking to me before the show, like your body weight. Maybe you measure screen yourself tomorrow printing. morning, and you say, yeah, screen print. Maybe you say tomorrow morning, you're like, damn, okay, I'm 190 on like you know the 22nd of December. Yeah. Let's uh, by February, you know, uh, 22nd. Let's be like 175, yeah. and uh, you know, let's train really hard, see where we're at, and then you know, look at your physique. Then say, hey, I need to improve these areas, and make that a focus, just like Chris Bumstead did with his back. Be like, damn, if my back's shabby, let me set like a program, do these exercises, think about why I'm doing these exercises, and yeah. really make it happen. You know, maybe a birthday weigh in. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Wednesday, yeah. maybe that's true. Tw- the 31. Maybe. Damn. I'm, I'm gonna have something. I'm gonna I'm gonna nail down. Yeah, three. next podcast. Three. Let's have something. You're gonna we'll hear three goals you from every me. step of the way. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Pat you on the ass. Fam. Yeah. <laughs> like Wrapping kings do. Up. Oh yeah, we can. We can. We got to get questions. Yeah. No, I. I it's all right. We, we didn't had a good end rant. rant. Yeah. Yeah. This is we did a good all right one. for, for a those that stuck goobers. around. Yeah. <laughs> we did all right for just a yeah. couple of kids. Well, hopefully, uh, I'm gonna do some work. I do have one goal: is getting some more guests on here. So if y'all have anybody that you think would be cool to have on here hear their story something they're doing locally with the community we'd love to get back for any local businesses that would you know love some shout outs and or you know we just love to have them on here talk about their story and what they're going through now with all the bullshit Amen. anyways we are out of here we will see y'all next Monday follow us all in the description below see y'all next time peace peace